Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm hoping uh, this topic today will be very helpful for you, uh, help you be aware of ideas that maybe you didn't think of before, or maybe a new ways of how you can think of uh, how you go forward from today, uh, partly because of what the situation we're in, right? Uh, and so to further expand on what I'm re referencing here as the line is that uh, locating ourselves, where are we today? Partly because of the situation we're in. And also just, I was thinking, even in your business, and how you go through the day uh, on a normal, when it's when we called it what was normal, now we're in a new normal, and eventually we'll even be in a better normal. Uh, I heard something today that made me think of uh, how this is applicable to us today. Uh, before 9-11, we were acting and living the way our life was, uh, but when 9-11 happened, that changed our whole life, our world, you know, security at the airport changed, uh, just everything changed in our life. But that, the storm then was mainly New York, but we were affected because it was our country, right? Our people. Well, this today is affecting the whole world. And so that's even going to put a different change and update and hopefully better like what happened after the 9-11. So right now though, we're in the storm and uh, we're all affected differently. So I'm hoping today this information will help you uh, how you process what's going on and how you deal with it and how you survive. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, there's been moments I wasn't surviving very well. And, uh, but what I've, I've practiced is what I'm going to share with you today. And uh, I still have room for more practicing. And so I'm hoping that I can help you and to think about where am I? Am I above or below the line in my thoughts, my actions, in my interactions with people, your, your family, your friends, phone calls, like Brad said, bike rides, are you out and about? I was out, yes, Brad, I was out yesterday and did a 15 mile ride and uh, interacted with the people from a distance or as I was riding by. Uh, but people like me, they were hungry for that. And so it was enjoyable to share a high, a smile, a wave, and, and out and about. So yeah, that's one way I'm being above the line is uh, I'm exercising uh, more diligently and consistently because that helps my mental thinking. So some of the ideas when you're maybe below the line and think about this, uh, possibly uh, you already know this or like maybe you didn't think of it this way, is that your, your closed mind and your thoughts uh, because of either the way your business is going, your family's going, our life right now is going, you're fearful. Uh, we definitely have a lot to be fearful uh, and also uh, be stressed. Now, if we're above the line, here's some ideas is that we're open to ideas. We're curious. What can I do? What can I learn? Like the other day, my wife and I, we were open and curious. Instead of eating out, we ate in on a date. And then we went on a date and put a puzzle together for two nights in a row. So what, you know, we were curious of what could we do to uh, have fun. Uh, and so I was trying to think, well, we went to the Matthews Cafe and had a delicious dinner uh, and then went out and, and, and did a puzzle. So some of the other ideas you might think of when you're below the line is that the news might be you're overloaded with too much news. And uh, I would encourage you possibly as an idea, if you haven't thought about it, if you're wanting to know what the situation is today, go to cdc.gov and maybe only get there or mostly get there the news of what's going on with the COVID uh, right now, 19, instead of all the media and, and social media, because possibly, I don't know about you, I caught myself getting too much news and, and social media and it was uh, causing stress and fear and anxiety. And so I decided I'm gonna cut back almost as much as possible. I'm not saying all, but a lot more I'm cutting out all that for my sake, for my mental clarity. And maybe that's something you can think about. Another area we could be below the line uh, in right now as and always uh, is money's tight or could be for some of us. And, uh, and everyone's a little different what that looks like. You might have customers or clients who are either canceling orders, postponing their orders, not working with you, uh, can't work with you because their, their business is closed. And so the scenario could be, you know, each one of you, I don't know, but these are some ideas that could cause us to go below the line. 
working from home or teaching our kids from home causes some troubles or challenges or new obstacles, right? Because we're not used to doing that, some of us. Some of us are used to working from home uh, or teaching our kids from home or at least making sure they're doing their schoolwork you know, online if that's possible. So each one of us has a different scenario why uh, being at home could be a challenge of some form and be below line thinking. Like, like right now, uh, we're out, we could be out of control. Our security is uh, un, not on stable ground right now, possibly. Uh, we're uncertain what the future is going to hold and we could be overwhelmed. And so these are some areas that we all are feeling, we've all noticed uh, at what degree it varies on each one of us, right? Uh, depends on a, a lot of things in our life. So some ideas to think about to be above the line to hopefully reduce or we can't get rid of stress, right? It can't get rid of fear, but we can reduce it or at least be in control and, and be happy your home, hopefully. Uh, I know that's caused this new scenario. Like when I retired and my wife and I started our business, we had to learn a new dance because uh, we weren't used to being together almost, not totally, 24-7. Uh, but our new dance at home because of uh, being together more than we were before when I was working eight to 12 hour days, depending on what the day was like. But it gives us opportunity to listen. Like my wife had a phone call from someone in our church today, just wanted to interact and listen, find out how we're doing. Uh, I hope you're doing that with, I called some of my clients today just to say, hi, what's up? And so do a lot of caring and sharing with your people that you're, you know, uh, that will, for one, you'll be lifting their spirits, finding out what's important to them, and then the return you win too because it cheers you up. They might share something that they're learning that keeps them above or helps them be above the line that you can do uh, to help you. And so it's a win-win for all of us if we're interacting and sharing, sharing with others. And at one point here that maybe you haven't thought of that I need to remind myself is to give myself grace. Uh, if I have a, one of those moments that are really struggling or stressful or whatever, uh, evaluate it and think, where am I at? What's going on? And it's like, all right, Dan, you had your moment of poo-poo. Now let's move on, right? Because it, it doesn't make us bad because we have a poo-poo moment. But if we let this go on and on all day, don't raise your hand. Just blink if you've done that. Let it go all day. Uh, you know, we all probably have. But how long do we let it go? So I'm going to encourage you to try to take some of these ideas and look at what's the good in them. How can I make it better? How can I use this opportunity? And that will help us through this journey uh, that we're in right now and, and, and beyond. Uh, as also as the way it affects our family and our business. And so I'm encouraging you to hopefully have some ideas here that you can start implementing that will help you. And then in turn, you'll be able to pay it forward to help others. So another area where you can be above the line, where am I, is uh, if we're below the line, a lot of times we feel to act. And so I, I don't feel like whatever. I don't feel like making phone calls. I don't feel like being pleasant to my spouse. I don't feel like what, you know, I don't feel like uh, helping my clients or my patients or whatever. Or, but if you act to feel, boy, what a change that does in your mindset. It builds confidence because now you want to make that other phone call again to the next client or the next uh, family member or the next friend because you had so much uh, enjoyment of uh, pouring into their life something that will help them or vice versa, they poured into you. So uh, I encourage you to do more acting and then you'll feel great in doing that at the same time. Another idea when we're above the line is that we're learning, we're growing. And you know what that remind me the other day is playing. I hadn't been doing enough playing since we've been home. And I noticed that when I play, it helps freshen up my mind, helps me have fun, helps me laugh more. Uh, my wife though, uh, doesn't always like all my playing because I'm picking on her and having fun. And she's like, can you just go into the other room for a while? Uh, go ride your bike or something. Uh, but uh, you know, it's just, she knew that we've been doing this for 40 years. So she knows what's coming, she knows. So the circumstances can be your ally. These are circumstances that are helping us to be more creative, uh, to be curious, opportunity to learn. I'm going to uh, share with you at the end of this uh, something that possibly will be a, a tool that you'll want to use uh, to help you learn 
uh, to be able to take away from this uh, for, for what you're involved right now. And so if we look at what can I do, it really changes our whole mindset of how we're approaching today and the situation, the storm we're in, and it makes it less stressful, less fearful, and more in control of what we do day in, in and day out, maybe uh, hour by hour, right? There's sometimes it could be like that. So the question is, where am I? Am I above the line or below the line? That would be something I'd ask you throughout your day uh, and catch yourself. Hey, I'm above the line, you know, and just keep going, right? How can I add to that? If I'm below the line, recognize it. And then I got some ideas that'll help you later of what you can do to switch that and then take the arrow and go up. But I want to let you know, we're all hardwired to go below the line on a lot of situations. We're, you know, we're programmed to perceive threats and problems. Uh, here's one that you, you probably all have thought of once. I'm not saying you have, but I'm going to guess. I'm a retired mailman. And so you, you can think of when you talk about how you, you get your mail service and how it works. You remember last year at Christmas, the mailman misdelivered my present to the neighbor's house from grandma and not to me. He always misdelivers. Well, that might have been the only day of the whole year that the mailman misdelivered your package or letter or your bill. You don't care about the junk mail most likely, right? But you'll remember like, well, you know, because and what do you remember about how the mailman worked that possibly? But you know what? There's only like 320 days out of the year that I was delivering your mail if I was yours and I made one mistake, but I did the other 319 good. So just see how we that's how we're hardwired. A lot of times we always think of what they didn't do. There was a problem to me. I didn't like it. But sometimes it's like use this practice, this uh, exercise here. And are you above or below the line? Sometimes it's real. We need to be able to line, right? But not always. And so when we are though below the line, this chemical uh, cocktail goes off in our brain and it starts flowing through our veins. And uh, so, you know, we go below the line on the situation, whatever it may be, uh, that'll happen. So our reaction, we're designed to react to a threat. That threat could be a lot of different things. It could be, you know, it comes after us emotionally or it could come after us physically, but how do we react to it? And you know, how soon do we catch it that maybe we don't need to stay there very long? And so I'm just hoping this that was helping you to think outside the box of maybe what's normal, and maybe you're already beyond that, it's wonderful. Uh, but maybe there's moments throughout the day that this will go, all right, Dan, I remember Dan said, align the line, you know? And so you can, you, you can take control and, and take, uh, the steps you want to do that will help you through the rest of the day or maybe the week or the month or during this whole uh, time that we're home, you know, because we need to stay home. So when we react though, and we go below the line, I just want to let you know you're normal. Don't use it to beat yourself up. Just, just know that this is almost always going to happen or not always, but very possible. But, but now see, so you're more aware of what, Oh, what can I do? What should I do that I want to do? And how can I go forward? I don't like where I'm at. I don't know about you sometimes. I really don't like where I'm at when I'm below the line. And uh, like a couple of days ago, I was like, I've got to go for a bike ride because I just did not like where I was at. And I know a lot of times and almost always that bike ride, I come home happy because I burn up some of that energy and got rid of some of that negative stuff and uh, interacted with some people on the trails and what have you. So. I'm just hoping this is equipping you so that way you can be more positive. So when we're below the line, we're not creative, cooperative, or connective, and all we're doing is surviving. But if we're in above the line, we are creative, we're, we're curious, we're looking, we wanna learn, and we're thriving. And so this, that's a spot I wanna be in, and I, you know what, I'm not an expert, but I'm practicing it, and I'm working on practicing it to become even better. So the action is, where are you? This book here is a tool that I wanted to share with you that possibly you could uh, order through Amazon or through uh, uh, your Kindle. And uh, this is where I got a lot of my reference from of what you can, how you can use this as a tool. This book is awesome that'll help you be more aware and uh, pay it forward and share the book with somebody else. 
just a minute, I, I want to share a little bit about what I do. A lot of times you hear when I have given my elevator, elevator speech or my announcements that we use a four component system with our clients. And what that looks like, it looks like this. It looks like a coach, community, habits of health, our, our training system, our feelings. And for our clients, and even for myself, to get 100% of uh, predictable results, as I say, is to use all four parts. And so uh, this is what I do, my wife and I, and we have the, the coaching. Again, this is just some pictures of what it looks like. That's a ho our home, the community. as uh, when we were having a, a health and hope night at our house. Uh, the training system and the fuelings, and uh, it depends on each uh, client I work with and what all that uh, works, how that works for them. And then just to, in case you've never seen my, a little bit of my story, uh, my before my, and now what I'm doing now with a healthy mind and, my, and body, uh, these are some of the things that I'm doing now that you can see. And like the bicycle ride is with my grandson at the Portland Bridge Pedal. We've done it I think, four years in a row now. So hopefully this year we'll do it again as our fifth. And then to close out here, there's some actions here of what you can think about for above and below the line. You might catch yourself like on the right, hopeless or hope, scarcity, abundance. So pick out some of those that might be beneficial to you or you didn't think about of what possibly you can go from the below the line ideas to the above the line. And that I'll end uh, and thank you so much, Brad, I'll give you back the share.